Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you guys are all doing really well. Today we're going to be doing another Exploring the World of video, which I'm pretty excited about because I feel like it's been like ages since I've done one of these, but also I'm excited because the topic that we're doing today is one that I find especially interesting and it's because it's YouTuber merch. <laughs> I don't know why but I just have the weirdest fascination with YouTuber merch and I'm sure that some of you guys have noticed that sometimes I'll like slip in talking about somebody's merch if I'm talking about them in a video if I find it especially ridiculous how bad their merch looks but I just find the whole concept of people who have all of this money that they're making off of YouTube not being able to just make not ugly merch just so interesting. So a couple weeks back, I'd actually asked you guys on my Instagram story to send me people that you thought had either good merch or really bad merch. And I've compiled some of the people that were mentioned there as well as some others that I got from Twitter. And we're gonna be looking at their merch. So if you wanna explore along with us into the world of YouTuber merch, then feel free to keep watching. Before we get into the video though, I did wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Raycon. If you guys aren't new to my channel, you probably know that I'm a pretty big fan of Raycon. They offer wireless earbuds that don't just sound great, but fit great too, because they've got a variety of different fit options. The best part though is that Raycon earbuds started about half the price as any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, yet they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Plus celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, Tyson and Brandy are all obsessed with Raycons too. Raycons are great for working from home or listening to music or podcasts for hours. Personally, I'm a really big fan of listening to guided meditations at night and because Raycon earbuds are wireless, I don't have to worry about waking up in the middle of the night or the next morning to any wires trying to strangle me. And since the compact carrying case can charge the earbuds four times on a single charge, I also don't have to worry about them dying on me quickly. Their everyday E25 earbuds though are their best model yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. And it also comes in new fun colors. So if you want to check out Raycon for yourself, click the link in the description box below to get 15% off of your order, which is buyraycon.com slash Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring. Again, if you are interested, definitely check out that link in the description box. But otherwise, let's get to the video. The first merch we're going to look at is by far the one that I was sent the most on Instagram, and it's Jake Paul's merch. He actually doesn't have that much merch on his website right now which is kind of surprising considering how much he peddles his merch in his videos like you would think if he's peddling it that much that he'd have a lot of options for people to choose from but for the most part he just has this t-shirt with a baby on it am i allowed to roast a baby if the baby is no longer a baby anymore i'm not roasting a baby this is just weird <laughs> i'm assuming that this is baby jake paul which I get where he was going with this, like having like a baby photo of himself on his merch. And the merch itself isn't bad. It's definitely simple, but it's not bad. But considering that Jake Paul's audience is so young, the idea of like nine-year-olds wearing a photo of a five-year-old, I don't know why, but that just sounds weird. But I have to say that that shirt is nothing compared to his next two sweaters that quite literally trigger my fight or flight response. I think the reason this one bothers me on such a strong level is because the gradient is so bad. Actually, now that I think about it, I feel like it's more of a balance between how bad the gradient is and the color scheme. Like, I don't know why that color scheme bothers me so much, but it bothers me. It's like a cross between bad tie-dye and someone just genuinely spilling a pink drink all over this sweater and then them just selling it for $65. I have to say though, I think this sweater is the worst of the lot, solely because this camo just reminds me of that three month period where everyone just wore those awful, awful Fashion Nova camo pants. <laughs> then obviously the Jake Pollers thing on the back, which I just can't believe he actually calls his fans Jake Pollers. And I can't believe he went as far as to put it on the back of his merch. I just don't get why you would set your fans up like this. Like they're too young to know any better, but you know exactly what's gonna happen when they pull up in this sweater at recess. Like that's just cruel. It's especially weird considering that he's on fanjoy with his merch and his merch specifically is just out of ordinary bad. Like usually on fanjoy, everyone's merch is like pretty decent. This is this. Moving on from Jake Paul though, we have Laura Lee's merch, which I guess more than anything, I have a gripe with her logo more than her merch because her merch is just sweaters and t-shirts with her logo on it. Anything that involves this font immediately just activates deep, 
deep rage. This font is easily the happy ukulele of fonts. It's overused, it's uncomfortably bright and happy, and because it's so overused and you're bombarded with it on literally every single platform, it makes your head want to explode. I have actually complained about this font before on my channel and someone had messaged me at the time saying that the reason that the font is so overused is because it's copyright free. So my new mission is I'm going to find whoever the artist was that designed this font and I'm gonna convince them to copyright it for the sake of the greater good. For the most part, her merch is just her logo placed on like sweaters and t-shirts, but she also has this subscribe hoodie that's just a bootleg supreme. I don't get why YouTubers do this. I don't know if that's just me, but I just feel like that's a weird slogan to wear. Like that's almost like wearing, hey guys, welcome back to my channel or don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Like she's been on YouTube for ages. There has to be something else she said in videos that she could have put on a sweater other than subscribe to my channel. Next, we have a YouTuber who we actually have talked about in regards to their merch before on the channel, but they have updated their merch. So I thought it was only fair that we talk about their new merch as well. As a bit of a refresher, we'll go over his old merch. He had this crew neck business, and then he also had this hoodie. Um, the coordinate one wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It definitely reminded me of like one of those graphic sweaters you'd see at like Zoomies or something, but the hoodie, I actually don't think there's anything funnier than this sweater. <laughs> Using papyrus on your merch is so brave. The last time that I talked about this sweater, we talked at length about it, but I have to say every single time that I see this sweater, I just have to take a moment and realize that this was available for purchase, which means that not only is this a thing that's available, but there might actually be somebody who's walking around wearing this. All I'm saying is you're really testing the loyalty of your subscribers if you're going, hey guys, if you wanna support me in my videos, you can buy my merch, and this is the merch option you give them. In a weird way, it almost kind of reminds me of like being in grade six, and everyone had to do those PowerPoint presentations on Egypt, and every single person chose this font for their PowerPoint presentation on Egypt. On the other hand, his new merch looks so much better. It's definitely a lot more simple, but I feel like it's one of those situations where less is more. Like he has this light blue hoodie that says dysfunctional on it in, I believe that's Cooper Black, which I think is a lovely font. He is on Fanjoy now, so I almost wonder if there's designers that kind of help out the YouTubers with their merch as well as host their products. He also has another sweater that plays on the whole dysfunctional thing. I do like the other sweater a bit better, but this one isn't bad by any means. It does seem though that he made up the definition for dysfunctional on the sweater because the actual definition is not operating normally or properly, but instead he just put simple, but chaotic. Okay, we're now moving on to the family channel merch section, which if I'm being honest, it's a mess. Starting off with the Ace family, I don't know what it is, but there is something about their merch in general that is just so tacky. Like for example, this logo with the Lifeline business on it, it technically isn't a bad logo. Like, I don't know who would consider the Ace family their Lifeline, but that's besides the point. But the logo technically isn't bad but it also is giving me like tongue out winking emoji vibe. Like, I don't know why you bother me so much, but you do. The Hey Ace family one though is straight up tragic. Like, I don't think I've ever seen such a sad, uninspired piece of merch in my life. It's just so clear that they don't even try. Like there's another one that says eat, sleep, ace. And it's so clear that it's just free clip art and free fonts on a t-shirt, which becomes even more frustrating when you consider how much money they make off YouTube, that they're not even willing to spare a bit of that to make their merch look nice so that their fans, who are the reason that they make that much money can actually look nice in their merch. But instead they just take the cheapest option so they can make the most money possible while they just make their fans wear dumb shit. The kicker though, is that they're selling a rip off North Face t-shirt, which is currently being sold for more than it would cost you to buy an actual North Face graphic t-shirt. They're charging you more for the bootleg. Speaking of tacky merch, the next family channel that we're gonna be looking at is the Prince family. And they don't actually have a ton of merch available. They only have two t-shirts. And the first one is their logo with Prince Gang. And then the second one is their logo again with Princess Gang. This is definitely personal preference more than anything because there isn't anything outrageously wrong with this merch. I just find it kind of tacky, but I feel like at the same time, family channels in general are just tacky. 
So can we get mad at them for that? Next, we have a YouTuber that I got sent quite a lot on Instagram when I'd asked you guys to send me people to talk about, and it's Haley Fam. She actually has some pretty nice merch. She has one that says family on it and another one that says fam Friday. I'm personally a pretty big fan of when YouTubers do this kind of subtle merch where it's not like in your face that it's YouTuber merch, but there's just enough that kind of ties it to the YouTuber that the person who's wearing it feels like they're wearing a YouTuber's merch. There is one sweater on her merch site though that I'm almost certain is the reason why she was sent so many times when I asked people on Instagram to send people and it's her narcissist sweater. This is... I can't take my eyes off of it. <laughs> I think this sweater is a good example on why I'll never complain if a YouTuber's merch seems too simple, like as long as it looks nice, because this is exhibit A on how less is often way more. There is just so much going on on this sweater. Like there's print on every single area of this sweater apart from the back of the sweater and the pocket, which I just feel like is never a good idea. Like I don't think I've ever seen anyone pull off this much print on a sweater. And I'm not even talking about just YouTubers, like even performers and artists. This sweater's just giving me a headache. There's so much print. There's rainbow everywhere. I have no idea why Narcissist is written that big. I just think it would have been a lot better if she'd had the hoodie with nothing on it except for the chest area. And then maybe Narcissist was written small enough that like it was actually just fit on one line and maybe put it in an arch got rid of that cursive font and swapped it out with something else, and maybe just made one line rainbow instead of narcissist and shine person. Like, just so that it's not like, so, ah? It's just a very odd sweater considering it doesn't even fit in with the rest of her merch store. Like, the rest of her merch is very like chill, pastel, subtle, and then this thing comes out of nowhere. Next we have James Charles merch, which I think is a pretty good example of simple but effective merch but also plagiarism. As most of you guys probably know, he did rip this design off from Kanye, which he is pretty open about, which at least that's nice that he's not like claiming it's his own original design, but also at the same time, it's kind of hard to praise his own merch when it's not his own design. I will say though that his color selection is massive and really nice because I don't think I've ever seen any kind of YouTuber offered that many color selections before. Next we have Tana Mojo who doesn't have a ton on her merch site either. She does have this one sweater that says Dizzy on it and it's like a tie-dye situation. I'm personally a really big fan of tie-dye sweaters as you can probably tell. I do really like this tie-dye design she has though. I feel like if there's one thing the tie-dye trend has shown is that there are a lot of ugly tie-dye designs that a lot of YouTubers have been choosing, but I really do like this one. I don't know if Dizzy is like a tagline of hers because I don't watch her videos, but whether or not it's a tagline or not, I feel like this is just nice, subtle, not in your face YouTuber merch, which I always think is nice. Speaking of not liking obnoxious merch, let's talk about Onision's. I'm not kidding when I say that this merch is terrifying on every level. He literally has a Joker version of himself as merch. Like, I don't know what's more terrifying. The fact that he made this merch or that there's people who bought this and are wearing it in public. He also has these ones, which I feel like if I didn't know the context behind Onision, I wouldn't find these creepy. But considering that I do, I do find these very creepy. By far though, his most ambitious piece of merch is his Onision swear word translations t-shirt, which both design wise and content wise, no words. Now the next YouTuber we're gonna be talking about is clearly in a league of their own when it comes to merch, and that is Jojo Siwa. She's not doing this press t-shirt fanjoy business. Like she brought in the big guns. She's got running shoes, people. Obviously she has a very big advantage compared to a lot of other YouTubers because I believe she's partnered with either Walmart or Target. So clearly she's got a lot more of a budget to work with and her merch is gonna be a lot more unique than what you see the standard YouTuber putting out. Some of these are full on looks though. Like we've got this rainbow moment where we've got a jacket with sequins on it and a matching skirt and there's matching shoes and even a matching journal as you do. Personally, I think it's cute. My little cousin likes her bows a lot and kids in general like glitter. So I think it's a good fit. The next YouTuber we're gonna be talking about is actually one that I got sent quite a lot on Instagram. And I have a feeling that the reason he was sent so much 
is because people haven't seen his merch in a while, which in fairness, I hadn't seen it in a while either until I had to look into it for this video. So I feel like people were anticipating a certain negative reaction based on his previous merch. But as of recent, Logan Paula has really upped his merch. He has some shirts like these that are a bit more simple, I keep feeling like every single time I see something simple, I have to attach, but it still looks nice at the end of it because I feel like people think that when I say something simple that I'm saying that it looks bad, but that's not what I mean. Like if something looks simple, it just means it looks simple. It doesn't automatically mean it looks bad. Do you think though that his best merch is his beige line? The color combo on that is so nice. And that is how you do a gradient. Dare I say that someone needs to take notes. If I'm being honest, I don't actually know what the text on the front of the shirt says. It looks like MZIV, which I don't know what that means, but I do think it's the kind of merch where it doesn't scream that it's from a YouTuber and similar to what I've said about other YouTubers, I feel like merch that kind of falls into that category is always really nice. A lot of people also sent David Dobrik, who I feel like his merch is the prime example of simple but effective because he's been riding that clickbait merch for like four years now. His merch strategy also is kind of the same as James Charles where he'll keep releasing the same sweater but in different colorways, but David does release different designs sometimes as well. In general though, there isn't really much to say about his merch regardless of like which design we're really talking about because I feel like they're all kind of just quite simple and once again, simple does not mean bad. It just means that it's simple and it's definitely working for him. So yeah. Next we have Addison Ray. The shoddy the baddest. Yeah. And she got her ways. I don't actually know what Addison Ray, Addison for you means, but I do know that the keep on trucking font is yet another font that triggers my fight or flight response. I honestly don't know why this font bothers me so much. Like well before teenage vloggers were overusing it, I still didn't like it. So I don't know why. Do you think her pouty face crew neck is really nice though? Like it's such a nice color combo between the pastels and the blue. And I feel like it's a nice mix of colors and like being very colorful without giving you a headache at the same time. And just in general, like the font is a really nice choice. It's very simple, but it just looks really good. Next we have Kevin Lang who apparently decided to rip off that Demetrius guy. It is one thing though to copy somebody's merch idea it's a completely other thing to copy that idea and then just make a worse, more boring version of it and expect people to buy it. I don't know why he would choose to copy from such a well-known and popular merch line, but he did for some reason. And I have to be honest, in general, I'm kind of over these like slap a sentence or slap two words on a sweater or a t-shirt and claim it's like making all these massive changes and like mental health and all these things when in reality you're just making money off of these people. It just never feels genuine to me, which maybe that's just me being cynical, but I feel like sweaters and stuff like this just kind of give me the same energy as like companies changing their logo to a rainbow during Pride Month. Another YouTuber that I got sent quite a lot was actually Emma Chamberlain, who I'm pretty sure most of us know got off to a pretty rocky start when it came to merch. For anyone who might not know, basically what happened was well before Emma Chamberlain had her own shop, she had this line with Dote that got a pretty universally shit reception because there were really high prices. She didn't do a preview of the products like before actually selling them and it was one size fits all. Since that though, I feel like her merch has been consistently really good. I feel like everything I see from her is always really well done and I have noticed that she changes her merch quite frequently. So a lot of things I've seen in the past aren't available anymore, but her newest line is actually really cute as well. It's like kind of like pastel colors and she's got this patch on it. It's very simple, mentions her name. I think it's nice. Now, technically the next merch line I'm gonna be talking about is not from a YouTuber. It's actually from a podcast, but I kind of wanted to talk about their merch line today because I feel like it's a great example of just being so blatant about the fact that your merch is just for making as much money as possible. I do wanna note that obviously at the end of the day, anybody who's putting out merch is trying to make money off of it. But I feel like there are some people who put a little bit more effort into caring about what their fan base is gonna be wearing versus others. For example, I feel like slapping different words in the same font on the same sweater over and over has got to be one of the laziest things I've ever seen. The merch line in particular that I'm talking about is the Call Her Daddy line, and I just wanna make it clear by no means are they the only people that do this, but I think they're a good example of it. The same actually goes for the next YouTuber we're gonna be talking about, which is Gabby Hanna, who has just chosen to put bonkers and desperate for attention on as many pieces of merch as possible. I just can't stand when people do this. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but it just kind of screams like, let's make as many options in the cheapest way possible with absolutely no effort so that there's a higher chance of more people buying it 
and we make more money. Like just put a little more effort in, just so we can pretend like you're not being so blatant about it. She does also have that monster merch, which killed that meme quite efficiently, but I feel like if you separate the design from how quickly she tried to make money off of that meme, it's actually pretty nice. The context does ruin it though. Anyways, Gabby Hanna's merch was the last thing we were gonna look at today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed exploring the world of YouTuber merch. There's definitely some that's nice, some that's not so nice, and some that I just can't even believe they put on the internet and expected people to take seriously. But hopefully you guys enjoyed looking at it with me and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And you can follow me outside of YouTube on Instagram and Twitter, which are both Casey Yonzo, if you want to. I also have a second channel, which is more like beauty, lifestyle vlog kind of content. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I will be linking it down below in the description box. But otherwise, I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video again and I'll see you guys in the next one. After I was exhausted, then I get back here, eat something, and I'm like kind of just laying down, and now <laughs> got so much energy. What am I gonna do with it? And wearing it. I think this is him as a baby. Why would I want to wear your face? Like, who is wearing this? And the picture too just freaks me out. Like he's like.